We begin the Gemara today on the bottom of Daf Tezayin Amit Beis. So this is continuing from what it said before regarding Mardachai, that because he gave up some, some of his learning in order to be able to be the Mishnah Lomelech, so he went down a level. He was counted number five instead of being counted number four. And the Gilad says that he was only Ratzi Leroy Vechov. So in connection to this, the Gemara brings another place where we find the greatness of learning Teireh. Amar Abba, Amar Av Yitzchak, Bar Shmuel, Bar Marta. Godel, Talmud Teireh, Yaseh, Mekibad Aveim. Learning Teireh is even greater than Kibad Aveim. Shekal Eisen Shonim, Shehoye Yaakov Avinu Beves Ever. All those years that Yaakov Avinu stayed to learn in the Yeshiva of Ever, which were 14 years, as the Gemara will explain now. Loi Nenash. So Yaakov was not punished for being away from his parents and not fulfilling the mitzvah of Kibbut Aveim. Whereas for the other 22 years that he was not with his parents, there was a punishment for that, and he didn't see his son, Yosef, for 22 years. As the Gemara will now go through the whole Cheshbin here, how we know that he was 14 years by Eder, learning Teireh, and where do we see that he was punished for the other 22 years. So as I said, we're going to go through some numbers here now. To Amamar... So the master said as follows, Why in the Teireh does it let us know how many years Yishmael lived? In Teireh, it never gives the number of someone unless he's a tzaddik, like you find by Avram, Sarah, and so on. But over here by Yishmael, it tells us how old he was when he, when he passed away. Why does it give the number of his years? The answer is, The reason is because this helps us give us the timeline for the years of Yaakov to know how old he was and what happened to him. And the Gemara will explain how we see from Yishmal, the age that he passed away, regarding Yaakov. What does it say regarding the age of Yishmal when he passed away? He was 137 years when he passed away. So Kama Koshish Yishmal Me So first let's start from Yishmal and Yitzchak. How much older than Yitzchak was Yishmael? Arbei Sushnin, he was 14 years older than him. Because the Pasuk says, Avram ben Shmoinim shana v'shei shanim beledes hagares Yishmael Avram. That Avram Avinu was 86 years old when Yishmael was born. Uksiv, and when Yitzchak is born it says, Avram ben Maas shana behivalid lo yis Yitzchak benoi. He's 100 years old when Yitzchak is born, so he's 14 years older than Yitzchak. Now, Uksiv, what does it say? Be Yitzchak ben Shishim Shona Beledes Aisam. How old is Yitzchak when he gives birth to Yaakov and Esav? He's 60 years old when they're born. So, what does that mean? Bar Kama vi Yishmal, Kedis Yaled Yaakov. So, how old is Yishmal when Yaakov is born? Bar Shivim Varba. He's 74 years old. He's 14 years older than Yitzchak, so he's 74 years old when Yaakov is born. Kama Paishin Mishnei. So, from, from the time when Yaakov is born. How many years are still left to his life till when he passes away? Shitin Utlas. There's another 63 years to his life when he, till when he passes away. Now why is that relevant? So the Gemara now brings a b'raiseh that points out that the time of the brachas that Yaakov and Esau got from uh, Yitzchak was the same time when Yishmol passed away. So Tani will learn a b'raiseh that Ha ya Yaakov avinu b'shosh and his barach mi'aviv ben shishin v'shalei shana. When Yaakov Avinu got the brachas from his father Yitzchak, how old was he? He was 63 years old. That's the time when Yishmael passes away. So here's where the lifetime of Yishmael, the age of when he passed away, is relevant for what's going on with Yaakov. Because we know that when the time when Yaakov got the brachas is the same time when Yishmael passed away. So therefore we know that, ya- that Yaakov was 63 years old then when he got the brachas. Where do we see that this is the time that Yishmael passed away? So again, that's the time when Yishmael passed away. Because the Pasuk there says that what happened after Esau got the brachis, or actually first Yaakov got the brachis, and then Yaakov, his father, sent him to go get a wife in Choron, and then Esau thought to himself, I'm also going to go and get a new wife. So Vayar Esau, Kibarech, Vegeim, Esau saw that Yaakov got the brachis, then Vayelech Esau vel Yishmael, Esav goes to Yishmol, Vayikach es Machlas bas Yishmol achais nevoyes. And he went to get married to Machlas, the daughter of Yishmol, which was also the sister of Nevoyes, the son of Yishmol. So the question is, why does the Pasuk have to point out achais nevoyes? That she's the sister of Nevoyes. 
If it says that she was the daughter of Yishmael, any so then I would know, obviously, that she's the sister of Nevoyas, because it already says earlier in the Taita that one of the sons of Yishmael was Nevoyas. So if she's the daughter of Yishmael, she's the sister of Nevoyas. So why is that detail being mentioned here? So this is teaching us, What happened was, Yishmael is the one that was Makadish. He did he, the, the engagement, so to speak, was through Yishmael. But then Umais, right then, at that time period, he passed away. So it's Nevoyas, which was the brother of the Kale that married him off, uh, married her off to Esau. So what do we see? That this is the time, and again, the Vayas Achia, the Vayas, her brother, married her off. So, so if Yishmael passed away at this time, so that's 63 years after uh, Yaakov is born, because in order for Yishmael to be 137 years old, so when Yaakov was born, Yishmael was 74 years old. 63 years later, Yishmael is 137 years old. That's the time when Yaakov gets the brachas. So this, this is what shows us that Yaakov was 63 years old. Okay, so now the Gemara continues. Shit in class, va'ar beiser, ah, the misyal of Yosef. So, so there's 63 years and 14, 14 years, Ad Misyal Yosef. So you have to add 14 years, another 14 years to this until Yosef is born. Right? Because again, 63 years old is the time when Yaakov gets the Baruches, and that's when he goes off to Choron. And if we're not going to count 14 years of him being in the Yeshiva of Ever, we're just going to count the time that he went straight to Lovon. So what did he do by Lovon? So the Pasuk there says by Lovon he worked seven years for Leah, and then he worked another seven years for Rachel. And then the Pasuk says, after 14 years, Yosef is born. So Yosef is born uh, after 14 years. So how old is Yaakov at this point? Ha, shivim v'shiva. 14 years after 63, he's 77 years old. Okay, now jumping forward. Oksiv, the Pasuk says, the Yosef ben Shloishim Shana, and Yosef is 30 years old, but Andai Lifnei Pare. When Yosef stood in front of Pare, so Yosef is 30 years old. So if Yaakov is uh, 77 when Yosef is born, so how old is Yaakov when Yosef is 30 years old? Homeya Vesheva. So Yosef should be, again, that, uh, that is, uh, uh, Yaakov should be 107 years old, 30 years later. But then you have to add some more years here. Shev, the Shiva. You have another seven years of the seven years of the, uh, the, 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 the again, Shev, the Sova, the seven years of the uh, seven fat years, the good years, the so, yeah. And then the Tarti, the Kafna, another two years of hunger. Uh, that's how long it took until Yaakov came down to Mitzrayim. So now, Homei Veshitzer. At this point, how old should Yaakov be if you add another nine years? So after, it should be 116 years old. What? 116 years old, right? Okay, so now, but what does it actually say? Oksiv, the Pasuk says, when Yaakov comes down to Mitzrayim and he stands in front of Parai, How old are you? So he tells Parai that I'm 130 years old. So the question is, how does he say he's 130 years old? According to our Cheshbin, he's 14 years younger than that. He's only 116 years old. So this proves what we said before, we're missing 14 years here for the life of Yaakov. There's 14 years that they was in the house in the yeshiva of Eva learning Taita and that, that we didn't count here. The Pasuk the Taita doesn't say this clearly, but it must be that there's 14 years that he hid himself to learn Taita in Bebe Seva. Netanya, and we learned this in the Braise. Braise says that Yaakov Avinu, the Bachir says, Yaakov Avinu Bebe Seva, Mutban Arba Esreshana. And he was hidden there in the yeshiva of Ever, learning Torah there for 14 years. Ever Meis, when the Ever passed away, two years after Yaakov left the yeshiva and he went to Aram Narayim, so if you make the cheshben in the lifetime of Ever, you'll see that he passed away two years after Yaakov went to, to Choron, to Aram Narayim. Yatsam Mishom, Aram Narayim, and he went, he came out of the yeshiva from Ever. And he came to Aram Narayim. So Nimtza, so now according to this Cheshvan comes out, that Kesha Omad ala Be'er, when Yaakov came out of the yeshiva of Ever and he stood by the Be'er, and that's where he met Rachel, how old was he then? Ben Shivim Vesheva Shana. Then already, 
He was, he was 77 years old. Not when Yosef was born, before we said, when Yosef was born, he's 77, because we didn't account for the 14 years by the yeshiva of Eber. But now that we know that he was already 14 years by the yeshiva of Eber, so he was 77 years old, just about ma- right to get married, a nice chosen bocher, 77 years old. Instead of standing by the air there. The air there. So now, according, so according to this, we see the cheshben over here, the lifetime that he was by Eber for, for, for 14 years. But the whole point that we were bringing this all was to say that for the time that he was by base Aver, he was away from his parents and he did not do Kibbut Avein, for that he wasn't punished. Why? Because he was learning Taita. All the other time that he was there and he was getting married and he was working and so on, even though Lechayri, he did it with the mitzvah of his father, telling him to go there. But nevertheless, the Pail, that time he did not do the mitzvah of Kibbut Avein, for that time period he was punished that he didn't see his son Yosef for 22 years. So the Gemara now will make the Cheshbim, so how do we know this? So how do we know that he was not punished for those 14 years that he was by the yeshiva of Ever? The Tanya, so we learned in the Braise, Nimtze Yosef Shepirish Mi'ovev Esrem Mishtayim Shana. Comes out that Yosef was separated from his father for 22 years. Kishem Shepirish Yaakov Avinu Mi'ovev, just like Yaakov Avinu separated from his father also 22 years. But the question is, the Yaakov Tlosem Vishit Navin. But didn't Yaakov separate from his father 36 years, not 22 years? If you add also the 14 years he was by Aver, so it's 36 years. Ella, so the answer is, like we said, this is the punchline here. Our baser, the Havas, the Havas, the Vase Aver, Le Choshev Lehu. Those 14 years that he was at the house of Aver, that's not counted. For that he wasn't punished. Right, so Yosef left his father. How old was he? He was 17 when he left his father. And then, 22, la- 22 years later, is when Yaakov came to see his son Yosef in Mitzrayim. Right, there, was the, there was the 13 years until when he was 30 years old, and then another 9 years, the 2 years of the hunger and the 7 years of the fat years. So that's 22 years, and those were the 22 years that Yaakov didn't see his son Yosef. But for the 14 years that he was in the yeshiva of Ever, for that he wasn't punished. So the Gemara asks, but still, how do you get to 22 years that he was by Lavan? He wasn't 22 years by Lavan. Saif, Saif, the end, the question still is, the base Lavan, in the house of Lavan, Esrim, Shonin, Havyan, he was only there for 20 years. Uh, right? Well, why was he there only 20 years? Because if you look in the Psukim there, what does it say? He was there for 14 years working for Le- Leia and Rachel, and then he was there an additional six years when Yaakov was getting all the different sheep that he was giving him and so on. He worked for him for additional six years. That's what it says in the Pasuk. So he was there only a total of 20 years, not 22 years. The answer is, But on his way back to Eretz Yisrael, so he took his time for two years. Tanya, we learned in Abraisa about those two years on the road. When he left Aram Narayim, he came to Sukkis. And on the road, he was 18 months. Shanema, the Pasuk says, V'yakev nosa sukaisa. Yaakov came to Sukkot, and then Vayivaloi Bayis, and he built a house. Olamikneyo also Sukkot, and for his cattle he built Sukkot. So Rashi says, how do you see this is 18 months? So Rashi says, because it says in the Pasuk twice, Sukkot. Sukkot is what you build in the summertime. So therefore it says twice Sukkot, that means two seasons of the summer, and one season that it says Bayis, that he built a house, is winter. So therefore that's 18 months. And then it says, Ubeveiskel Osa Shisha Chadashim. And in Beiskel, he was another six months of a Hikriv Zvachim. And there he brought Karbanas to the Abish for those six months. So that's 24 months, two years that he stayed on the road. So that's the 22 years that Yaakov was away from his father. Hadaran Allah, Megillah Nekras. This is the conclusion of the first Pedic of Mesechte Megillah, which concludes with this theme of the Milo of Limud Atayra, how powerful Limud Atayra is. That Yaakov Avinu, even though he was away from his parents, but learning Taita is something that did not affect him at all. This was. Uh, what was Yaakov's kavana for those 18 months? I mean, I can understand if by love and he had to do this work for an Aveda. Should have, he should have came back quickly. Uh, no, what, what did he have to do? What was accomplished there, even Lamaila, l- l- that. Uh, I'm sure a lot of great things. You had the whole story of Shechem that happened in that time period and other things. Yeah. One that reads the Megillah in the reverse. So Bipashtus, what this means is, for example, you read the second Pasuk before the first Pasuk, or anything from later before the earlier Psukim. You're not Yaitza the Mitzvah. 
There's the famous pshat of the Baal Shem Tov on this that the Rebbe mentioned many times. A person that reads the Megillah, he reads the story, every detail, he tells the story, everything as is, in the right order. But he reads it lemafreya, as a something in history of the past. Not something that happened now, it's not relevant today, it's not something in the present, it's something of the past. Well, Yatza, you know, Yatza, the point of the whole mitzvah. The point of the whole mitzvah is that the story of the Megillah has to be something that's relevant and present and happening right now. Kara al pet, if you read the Megillah outside, not looking inside the Megillah and we're reading it from the Megillah. Or Kara Targum, you read it in Aramaic. Or Bukhaloshan, you read it in any other language besides Hebrew. La Yatza, you're not Yatza either. Aval, however, Kairin Aisal Lulayazais, you could read the Megillah for those that understand other languages. Belaz, in other languages. So you can read it for them in other languages. So the Gemara will explain over here the obvious contradiction that on one hand the Megillah is saying, don't read it in other languages, and immediately it says that for someone that doesn't understand Hebrew, you can read it for them in other languages. We'll see in the Gemara. The Halay is Shishoma Ashuris Yatza, a person that understands only other languages. He does not understand Hebrew, but he heard it Ashuris. Ashuris means he heard it in Hebrew. Yatza is Yatza, even if he doesn't understand. Kara, say it again, you read the Megillah with breaks. You don't read it all at once, you read it and you make breaks in between. Or misnamnam, a person was dozing off while he's reading the Megillah. Yatsa ir yaitse. The Gemara will explain exactly what misnamnam means. Hoya kaisva, if a person is writing the Megillah, or darsha, he's darshaning the psukim of the Megillah. Umagia, or he's proofreading the words of the Megillah to see that it's written right. Im kiven liba yatsa, if he had kavana for the mitzvah, so then he's yaitse. Vam lav lo yatsa, if not, he's not yaitse. Haisak suva, what's if the Megillah is written, not with the regular ink that's used for the Megillah. Visam, which is a lighter ink, the Gemara will talk about exactly what all these are. Visikra, bekumos, bekankantum, various different types of ink. It's red, or it's uh, different colors. Kankantum is a shoe polish that's used usually for shoes. Alanayar, now also it wasn't written on the pro proper parchment, it was written on paper. Valadiftere. This is parchment, this is actually from the height of an animal, but it's not worked out properly to be smooth. Lo yotza, you not yotza. Achetek suva ashuris, has to be written Hebrew, ashuris, and in the writing, that, like you write a sefer teire, ala sefer, properly on the sefer, on the proper parchment needed for this, ubid yai, and also with the proper ink that's needed for this. And if you remember, we had yesterday in the Gemara, it added another detail, that you need sirtot, when you write the lines of the Megillah, you have to make those markings for the line. So it's also similar to a sefer teire. From where do I know if you read the Megillah, the order of the Psukim, and not in the order that it's written, so that you're not yet. Amarave, the Amakra, the Pasuk says, Kiksavam ochizmano. That the mitzvah of Megillah should be in its writing and in its time. So what do we learn from this? Maz manom lemafreya loy. Just like time goes forward, doesn't go backwards. So you dalit and then tezvav. Av ksavam, so to the writing, lemafreya loy. It shouldn't be in the reverse, it should be in the right order. But how is this a source for reading the Megillah? Midi Does the Pasuk over here say anything about reading the Megillah? It talks about doing, fulfilling the mitzvah of the Yantiv. To fulfill the Yantiv of Purim in these two days, as it's written in the Megillah and in the timing that the Megillah says. It doesn't talk anything in these Psukim about writing, the, uh, again, about reading the Megillah. Talks about the doing the fulfilling the mitzvah of the yantar. So how do you know regarding the reading it that has to be in the right order? So therefore the Gemara brings another pasik. Ela mehacha. The pasik says the chsev hayomim ha'ele. These days nizkarim v'nasim should be remembered and should be fulfilled. So over here we say iskish zechire la'asiyah. Over here zechire does refer to them remembering it by reading it by by the kriya. La'asiyah, to the way you fulfill it. Ma'asiyah lemafreya lo'i, just like when you fulfill the days of the Purim, it can't be in the reverse, first there's Yudalit and then there's Tezvav, it's always in that order. Av'schir lemafreya lo'i, so too when you read the Megillah, it always has to be in the order the way it was written. Tana and Abra'isu we learned, v'chein b'halal, the same halacha applies to halal as well, that you have to say it in the order. V'chein b'kriyashma, the same, the kriyashma has to be said in order. And u'betfila, and the same thing is with davening shmei nesra, the psukim, the brachas that is, of shmei nesra should be said in the order. So the Gemara here is going to bring the source for these things that mentioned in the Abra'isa. Halal minala, from where do we know that halal has to be said in the order? So there's a few sources. Rabba Omer Rabba says, In the first beginning of Halal we say that the sun shines up and the sun sets. 
So just like the sun comes and sets in a certain order, the beginning of the day and the end of the day, so too when you praise the Eivishah in the Psukim of the Halal, should also be in the order of the Psukim. Rav Yisav, Amar Rav Yisav says, it says, Masa Hashem. Later in Halal we say, this is the day that Hashem created. So just like a day also goes in a certain order of the day, so to the Halal should be said in order. Rav Ivya Amar, it says, Yihi Sheim Hashem Evoirach. The name of the Eivishah should be benched. So the word Yihi, Yihi means as is. Leave it as is. Don't make it your own order. From the following Pasuk that it says also there, From now until forever. Also going in the order of time, same thing, when order of the Psukim, you say it as is without changing. From where do I see that Kriyeshma must be said in the right order and not to reverse the order of the Psukim? So the Gemara here brings a Braise that talks Pachlal about reading of Kriyeshma, different Talachas about Kriyeshma. This is a Gemara in Brachas also. And then in the middle, we'll also have the source for Lamafreya, for not reading it in the reverse. The Tanya, the Braise says as follows Kriyeshma Kiksova. You have to say Kriyeshma as written, meaning in Hebrew. Divrei Rebbe. That's what Rebbe says. Chachamim say no Kriyeshma could be said in any language. My time at the Rebbe. So what's the source for what Rebbe says? It has to be said Davke in Lashon Kaidish or Makra because the Pasuk says in Kriyeshma Vahoyu. Right? It says Vahoyu Advar Meila. What does Vahoyu mean? Vahaviyasan Yiu. Leave it as is. Say it as is in Lashon Kaidish. But Rabbanon, and Rabbanon that say, my time, why do they say that it can be said in any language? Or Makra, because right in the beginning of Shema, the Pasuk says, Shema, listen. What does that mean? That's in whatever language that you can hear the message of Shema, you can say it. It doesn't have to be specifically in the way it's written. So the Gemara explains each of the opinions, what they do to the other drasha that was said. The Rebbe Nami Hoksiv Shema. According to Rebbe, doesn't it say Shema, which would mean, which would indicate any language? So why does he say that it has to be Lashon Kaidish? So the Gemara says, Ahumi Bayale. He learns out from the word Shema, Hashmei Laz Nachamashat Meitzim Mipicha. That you have to be sure to say it loud enough that you, with your ears you can hear what's coming out of your mouth. The Rabbanan Savri and the Rabbanan say, from where do they learn out this concept? You have to hear what you say, but no, they hold Kemanda Omar, like the opinion that says. <coughs> Sorry, Hakaydas Shema Vloyishmi Laz No Yatsa. If you read Shema and you could not hear what you're saying with your ears, you still yatsa. So they don't need it for that Rasha. Now going back to the Rabbanon, the Rabbanon Nami Hakse Vahoyu. According to the Rabbanon, does it not say Vahoyu, which means that it has to be as is? So why do they say that you can read it in every language? So the Gemara answers, Aomi Bayale, they learn out from Vahoyu the point that we began with here. That you have to read it as is and don't reverse the order of the Psukim. From where does Rabbi know that you shouldn't read it out of order? When it says Vahoyu, it could have said Vahoyu Dvarim Eile, but it doesn't say Dvarim, it says Hadvarim. So Hadvarim means leave it Hadvarim as the words are written here. That extra hay is not extra. He doesn't hold of this drasha of the extra hay, and therefore he has to learn it out from the word Vahoyu. Now the question is, Leime, going back again to explaining the opinion of Rebbe and the Rabbanon. So Rebbe said that from Vahoyu you learn out that you must read Shema Lash and Kaidish, and the Rabbanon say that you learn out from Shema that you could say it in any language. So the Gemara now goes back to this. Leime Kasava Rebbe, shall we say that Rebbe holds, call la Taira Kula, the entire Taira. B'chal Lashon Nemra could be said in any language. So what is this referring to? So according to Rashi, when it says, Kol HaTayra Kulu B'chal Lashon Nemra, what this means is, any time you read from the Taira. When you read from the Taira, you can read in any language. That's what Rabbi holds. Always, you can read in any language. Now here, Shema is an exception. Here you must read in Lashon Kaidish. Now why the Yisro Kedai Toch, Lashon HaKaidish Nemra, if you're going to say that always, whenever you're reading from the Taira. So you must read it in Lashon Kaidish. So, why do you need a special pasuk to tell me here by Shema Vahoyu that Shema must be said in Lashon Kaidish? If every time you read from the Torah, it must be in Lashon Kaidish. So, therefore, this would Lachayda indicate that Rabbi holds that always you can read in any language. But over here, when it comes to read Shema, over here there's a special Chiddush that the pasuk says Vahoyu that you must say it in Lashon Kaidish. That's what it seems. So, the Gemara says, no, it's Tarech. Even if it's true that all of Torah must be read in Lashon Kaidish, I would still need a special pasuk to tell me by Shema that it also has to be read in Lashon Kodesh. Why? Because I would think Shema Kirabonon. Because the title over here by Kriyashma says the term Shema. 
So I would think to say that that teaches us, like the Rabbanan said, that it could be in any language, even if rest of Taita must be in Lashon Kaidish. Cost of Rachman of Ahayu. So therefore, here specifically, the Taita has to say Ahayu that you have to read Shema specifically in Lashon Kaidish. The Pshat I said is Rashi's Pshat, that when it says there, Kola Taita Kula refers to reading the Taita. Like any time you read from the Taita on Shabbos and so on, but Taisus disagrees with this Pshat because Taisus says reading from the Taita any time is not a mitzvah in a Taita. We're talking here about the mitzvah of Kriyashma, which is a mitzvah in a Taita. So why are we bringing in reading from the Taita any time, which is not even a mitzvah in a Taita at all? Therefore, Taisa says this refers to other times when you read, which is a mitzvah in a Taita. What's the example for that? Like when you have to read Psukim, when you bring Bikurim. <coughs> Sorry, when you do Chalitza. Also, you have to read certain Psukim. There are other times when you have to read, and those are readings that are done in Taita. That's what the Gemara was referring to here. Okay, let's continue. The Gemara will now say a similar thing according to the Rabbanon. Shall we say that the Rabbanon hold that kol ha-tayre b'losh na-kaydish nemra? That the entire tayre is read and is said b'losh na-kaydish. Why? The east look at aytach b'chol losh nemra. If you're going to tell me that all of tayre could always be read in any language. So lam alilu mikhtav shema. Why does a tayre here regarding kriya shema have to say shema that it can be said in any language if always it's read in any language? So again the Gemara answers... It's terich. Even if all of Taita could be said in any language, but still I have to teach you here specifically regarding Kriya Shema that it's said in any language. Why? So, because I would think to say, Vahoyu. Maybe here by Kriya Shema the Taita writes the word Vahoyu. And Kerebi. I would say that maybe that teaches us like Rebbe that it must be in Lashon Kaidish. Kasav Rachmane Shema. Therefore the Taita writes Shema that it could be said in any language. Okay, so this is the conclusion regarding Kriya Shema. The Gemara continues now regarding Tefillah. Tefillah min alon. From where do I know that when you daven Shmai Nasra, you have to say the order of the Ibrachis and the order the way we have it. Tanya, we learned in Abraise, and here the Gemara is going to bring the source for all of the Brachas of Shmai Nasra, and specifically why we say it in the order that we say it. So the Abraise says, Shimon Apakuli, his the Shmai Nasra, Brachas Lefnei Rabbi Gamliel, Allah say this. Shimon Apakuli is the one that organized the 18 Brachas of Shmai Nasra in front of Rabbi Gamliel in this order. So his name Shimon Apakuli is, so Rashi says, Pakuli is someone that deals with cotton. He was a cotton merchant and therefore he got this name. And he's the one that made the brachas of Shemayin Esther. We'll see later in the Gemara. The Gemara actually says right here. Let's see, let's continue a second. So it says, Ve'omri lo masnit etana. And all the others say that we learned in the Braise, who's the one that made the Shemayin Esther, the brachas of, that we say in Shemayin Esther? Me'ya ve'esrim zekeinim. It was the 120 elders, which is, this is the Anshe Knesset Sagdayla. Ubehem kama neviim, amongst them there were also prophets, tikni shmei nesu brachas al seder. They are the ones that instituted these brachas on the seder. So the Gemara will later say that the brachas of shmei nesu come from the Anshe Knesset Sagdayla. There were prophets amongst them, and it was, the order was forgotten later, and Shimon Apakuli reorganized them. But it comes originally from the Anshe Knesset Sagdayla. Here, the Gemara will bring the braisa for the order. What's the reason for the order that we say it in? So, from where do we know that we have to begin with the first bracha which speaks about Alekei Avram, Alekei Yitzchak, Alekei Yaakov, the Ovis? Shanama, because the Pasuk says, when you come to Davin to the the first thing is you have to give praise. Havu Lashem B'nei Elim. Come, bring to the Abishter and, and praise him with B'nei Elim. What the, the one, the strong ones that are in the world, which refers to the Ovis. From where do we know that then we praise the Abishter with his might? Shanem Ahavol Hashem, covered voice, bring the Ebishter his honor and his might, which is the Gvuris that we say, Atta Gibar. Omenai Shemrim Kedushais, from where do we know that we say, Atta Kaddish, Hashem Kaddish, the third bracha? Shanem, because then it says, Havol Hashem, covered Shemai, Ishtach Vol Hashem, bow down to the Ebishter, Bahadras Kaddish, in the splendor of his holiness. So that that's the third thing that we praise the Ebishter for his holiness. That's the first three brachas. Now why is it that the first bracha that we come and ask for what we need, so the first thing is we ask the Ebishter for Bina, for understanding, after uh, the bracha of Atta Kaddish. Shanemar, because the Pasuk says, V'kidishu, as Kedosh Yaakov v'salakei Yisrael, they sanctify the holiness of the Ebishter, the God of the Eden, Yaritzu, and then V'salmech Lei, what does it say right after this Pasuk which, talk, which talks about expressing the Kedusha of the Ebishter? V'yedu, Toyeruach Bina. And those spirits, those that are wandering spirits, will know Bina, they'll have understanding. So you see that after Kedusha comes understanding. That's why the next bracha is, Atachaynen, Ladam Das, Malam Bina. 
just uh, in, in the Lakut Taira, the Alta Rebbe says that the bracha of Atachayin Aladim Das, what is it really talking about? What are we asking the Abishta for? So the Alta Rebbe says, we're asking the Abishta to have a Das in a Lakus. A person could have an understanding in Gashmias and everything else that's in the Chachmas in the world, but he doesn't have a sensitivity to understand the Lakus. So we're asking the Abishta to open up our Neshama and to have a Das in the Lakus. According to what it says in the Gemara, you can understand this because we're saying that this is a bina that follows the kedusha of Atta Kaddish. So we're not I'm talking about any kind of a bina here. Continuing in the order of the brachas, why does tshuva come after the bracha where we asked Abishah for understanding? Because the pasuk says, he'll understand in his heart, and then Then, because of his understanding that he has, this brings you to tshuva, and then you do tshuva v'rafalei, and you get healed. So you see that tshuva comes at the bracha of Hashiveinu comes after the bracha of Atachayin Aladim Das. So now continuing on. So ihachi if so leim rufu basra the tshuva. So shouldn't uh, the bracha of Rufainu come after tshuva because that's what it says in this pasuk. You do tshuva and then verafalei the Eibush heals you. So the Gemara says no leisal kedaitach. You can't say that rufu comes after tshuva. The Chesiv there's another pasuk that says v'yashuv al Hashem v'yirachmeyu. You do tshuva and Eibush has mercy upon you v'alalekeinu to God ki yarbel esloyach and He forgives you. So what comes after tshuva? Slicha the atonement. So therefore the bracha of slach lana comes afterwards. So what the Gemara asks umay chazis the samchis haha smoy haha. Why are you relying on one Pasuk that puts Sliche after Tshuva? Why don't you base it on the other Pasuk that puts the Rufua right after the Tshuva? So the Gemara says, because Ksiv Kra Achirina, there's another Pasuk where it says, Hasilech l'chol avineichi, the Ebesha forgives all my sins. And then afterwards it says, Arayfu l'chol tach loeichi, agel meshachas chayeichi, that the Ebesha heals me of all of my illnesses and the Ebesha redeems me. So we see that the Sliche comes before Rufua. So the Gemara says, so what does this mean? Lememre, so shall we say that according to this Pasuk, we see the Geula Rufua Basa Slichihi. Redemption and healing only comes after Sliche. But for Haksiv, so then how are we going to interpret the previous Pasuk that we brought? Over there it says, Vishav, a person does Shuva. And as soon as he does Shuva, Verafalai, the Ebishter heals him immediately. So what's the story? In the end of the day, we do have a Pasuk that says that the Rufua comes first. So how do we explain that Pasuk? So the Gemara answers, Hahu lav That pasuk where it says that the Ebishti heals the person right after he does tshuva, it's not talking about healing a person from his illnesses. El rafua the sliche here. There, that term of healing refers to the sliche when, a, when the Ebishti atones. So that is the rafua of the averis that happened to the person. Okay, so we have two different kinds of rafuas. But now moving on to the psukim, what comes after the bracha of slach lanu? The bracha of the Geula, the Eino of Enyeinu, the Devish should redeem us. So the question is, Why is Geula in the seventh bracha? So Rashi explains, the Gemara's question is, didn't we bring before the Pasik? What, what comes after the Sliche? Asileach l'chol avinechi, then comes Haraif l'chol tach l'echi, that the Ebeshter heals, and then Agoyal, that the Ebeshter redeems. So first should come the bracha of Enyeinu, and then the bracha of Eino of Enyeinu and the bracha of Geula. Amarave, so Rav answers, because the Yidin are going to be redeemed in the seventh year, in the year of Shemitah. Therefore, the Brach of Geula was, was established in the seventh, uh, in the seventh Brach. So in the year of Shemitah now. So the Gemara here is saying that the time when the Geula comes is in the year of Shemitah. And the Gemara brings a source for this. Actually, the Gemara asks a question. <coughs> But in the source of this concept that Mashiach comes in the year of Shemitah, didn't the Master say as follows, In the sixth year there will be the sounds of the arrival of Mashiach. In the seventh year, that's going to be the year where there will be wars. And then and then the following year after Shemitah, then Ben David Ba. That's when Mashiach comes. So we see actually that Mashiach comes in the eighth year, not in the seventh year. So we could put the, put the bracha of Gula after the Fu in the eighth bracha. So the Gemara answers, that even the Muhammad that takes place in the seventh year is already the beginning of the redemption and therefore the redemption does come in the seventh year. Well, the Rebbe already said many times that we've already experienced the Muhammad, we already experienced many times. So the Gula could come right away in the seventh year. And the, the Kailas of Mashiach we already have also. We had it in the sixth year. We had more, eno- enough Kailas of things that happened in the last years. So Mashiach, this is the year, this is when it's happening. Okay, Rashi, by the way, points out another detail here. The bracha of Re'ena Vanyena, which is the bracha of Geula that we say in the seventh bracha, which the Gemara is talking about, is actually not a bracha where we ask the Ebishter for the Geula of Mashiach. 
It's a bracha where a person asks the Eivish there a geola from his personal tzadis that he needs a redemption from. So the bracha for the geola really comes later in Shemayin Esra. V'shalayim Ircha, Semach David Avdecha, or even before that, Kabbah Shefer Gadol. But nevertheless, Rashi says, all geolas are related to one another. So since the time for the geola is in the ninth, or is in the seventh year, that is, so therefore we say it in the seventh bracha, even though we're talking about more of a personal geola. Moving on to Shemayin Esra, Umar al-Layma Rafu'a b'Shminis. Why is the bracha of Rafu'a the eighth bracha? Because the mitzvah of Brismila is the eighth day, which needs healing. So therefore the bracha for healing is also in the eighth bracha. Why is the bracha for Parnasa, for the Eivishah providing for the year, is in the ninth bracha? Amr Alexandri, said Alexandri said, This is against those that hire the prices of, of all the goods. The Chsiv, which is, there's a Pasuk that's written about this in the ninth Mizmer of Tehillim. The Pasuk there says, Shver Zreya Rasha. You should break the arm of the Rasha that raised the prices. Rashi points out that over there it says that the Rasha steals from the poor people. What does it mean that a Rasha steals from the poor people? A Rasha usually steals from the rich people, not from the poor people. The answer is, it refers to the poor people that the Rishayim raised the prices and it affects mostly the poor people. And the David ki yamra, b'chi yisamra. When David HaMelech said this, where is it? It's in the ninth capital of Tilim. So Rashi points out, if you look in our Tilim, it's actually in capital Yud. But originally the Tilim, the David HaMelech wrote, capital Aleph and Beis were considered to be one capital. So therefore it's in capital Tess. Umar alayim ha kibbutz galiyas lacha birchas hashanah. Why does it speak about the ingathering of all the Yidin Teretz Yisrael after it speaks about the Parnasa of the Ebesh, the giving us the food that we need? The Chseh, because the Pasuk that says, Va'atem hare Yisrael, Tzana Yidna here, Ampechem Titeinu, you should give your branches, Uprichem Tisu, you should carry your fruits, La'ami Yisrael, from my Yidin, Kikar Vulavai, because the Yidin are getting close to come. So we see that when Yidin are coming to Teretz Yisrael, so you need all the food for them. So therefore, after the Ebishter benches us with all the food, that's when the Eden could get gathered into Eretz Yisrael. The Kimish and Iskap to Goliath, and once you have the Eden getting gathered, so that was the next bracha, the tenth bracha of... Uh, the, how does the bracha begin? The Kabbalah Shef Gadol, right? The Ebishter gathers us. So now we get into the next bracha, which is Hashiva Sheftainu. The Kimish and Iskap to Goliath, once the Goliath is gathered, Nasadin Berishayim. Now the Ebishter judges all of the Rishayim. Shenem of Hashiva, Yadi, Alayich. The Ebishter says, I will return my hand on you, Ve'etzrev, Kabar, Sigayach, and I will clean you out from all your filth, from the Rishayim. Oksev, Hashiva Sheftayach, Kibar, Rishayna. I will bring back the judges like they were in the beginning to judge all the Rishayim. And the Kivish and Nasa din men are Rishayim. The Ebishter judges all the Rishayim. Kolo apayshim ve kolo zeidim imam. So all the sinners and all the zeidim, all those that are intentionally sinning against the Ebishter, they don't believe in the Teira that comes men Hashemayim. Rashi here says that's what it refers to. They don't believe in in Meish Rabbeinu and Teira men Hashemayim. The Ebishter judges them all. Shenema veshever apayshim veshavar apayshim. The Ebishter breaks those that sin. Veshever apayshim vechatoyim yachtov. All of them together, the Ebishter punishes them. Okay, so this is the next bracha that we say, right? Olam Ashlinim. That's act- it's actually a bracha that they added at a later time period. But this is in connection to this, that the Ebishter comes back to judge. And then, V'kivin Shekalo HaPayshim. Once all the sinners are all eradicated, Misrei Memes Keren Tzadikim. The, the horn, the strength of the tzaddikim is elevated. The horn, the strength of the Rishayim is cut down. And you can rise up the strength of the tzaddik. And the Kaimul Gere at Tzadikim at Tzadikim. You include also the righteous Gerim together with Tzadikim, as we say it in the Bracha of Allah Tzadikim, also the Gere at Tzadik. Shanem Pne Seva Tokim Vadarta Pne Zakim. You get up for an older person, you get up for a person that's a Talmud Chacham. The Samach Lev Chiyagir Itchem Ger. And there in the Pasuk it also speaks about giving the proper treatment to a Ger. Now the Heicha Misrei Memes Karnam, where is the Keren, the strength of the Tzadikim raised up? Yerushalayim, that's in the city of Yerushalayim. Shenema Shalu Shalayim Yerushalayim Yishloya Yavayich, you should seek out the peace of Yerushalayim. And this refers over there to the Tzadikim that come to Yerushalayim. That's why the next bracha is Yerushalayim Ircha. And then the Kivin Shenivis Yerushalayim, once Yerushalayim is built, Ba David, that's when David the Melech's kingdom returns to Yerushalayim. Shenema, it says, Acha Yeshuva B'nei Yisrael, after you Eden will return to Yerushalayim, to the base of Mikdash. So then, a Bikshurus Hashem Alekeim, Ves David Malcolm. That's when the Yidin will, will ask for David Amelech. 
for their king, for David, for, for Mashiach ben David, L'chayre, this refers to him, right? And then, the Kibin Shabbat David, and then, once David the Melech comes, Ba'as HaTfila, that's when the Yidin can daven again properly, in the Beis HaMikdosh. Shanem HaVav Yaisim Ola Kotche Vissamachtim Veveis Tfilasi, once you come to the mountain of the Ebishter in the Beis HaMikdosh, there you'll be joyous with being, being able to daven in my house of prayer. And then, the Kibin Shabbat Tfila, once Yidin are in the Beis HaMikdosh, to be able to daven, Ba'as Aveda, they can return to do the Aveda again. Shanem HaVav Yaisim Ola Kotche Vissamachtim Veveis the Yidin can come and do the Aveda there in the Beis HaMikdosh, when the Eden do the Aved in the Beis HaMikdash, Ba'as Teireh, they bring a carbon Teireh as well, Shanema Zaveach Teireh Yechab Donani, that the Eden bring the carbon Teireh for the honor of the Eibishter. Just to point out one thing over here in the order of the Brachis, what did it say here? After the Eden come to Yerushalayim, and after they build the Beis HaMikdash, only then do we have the Melucha of David HaMelech. L'chayr, it's the other way around. The Melucha of David HaMelech, which is Mashiach, comes first, and Mashiach is the one that builds the Beis HaMikdash. So if I remember correctly, there's a letter from the Rebbe Rashab about this, and he says that there's two dargis in the Melucha of Mashiach. Sometimes Mashiach is called Mashiach, and sometimes he's called Ben David. So there is the original revelation of Mashiach that he comes and builds the Beis HaMikdash, but the full revelation of Mashiach is only after he builds Mish- uh, the Beis HaMikdash, or even also as you have it in the Rambam, only after Mashiach fully builds the Beis HaMikdash, and the Kibbutz Goliath and everything, only then is he Mashiach Vadai, and therefore it's saying here in the Gemara that only after the Beis HaMikdash is built, you have the full return of the Melucha of Davar HaMelech.